Right, we'll log into the system. So we're logging in as the administration user. I'll enter a password and we'll hit the sign in button. This is the landing page. You'll see this whenever you log into the system. So under the tools menu, we've got our deployment configuration. So we'll go there now and we'll go to releases. There's just the one release in this demonstration environment and we'll flip to navigator view. So in the middle of this configuration is the release and that's got business works archive and an AMX archive associated with it. The business works archive has an associated engine and it's got an operation within which, if I expand that, we'll see some global variable configuration. The AMX archive is associated with a Java service unit. That's deployed on a node, which is associated with a physical server, and that physical server belongs to an infrastructure environment. So that's your dev test production environments. So that's the bottom of our configuration tree, and the um, release descriptor is the central piece that contains all of your other configuration. Now I'm going to switch over to Release Butler. It's a very simple command to start the process. That's just RB go. I'm running this against a completely clean environment. There's nothing currently deployed. So the first thing this process does is it goes away and it grabs the configuration that we saw earlier in HP Systemnet. So the, the AMX archive, the BW archive, the global variables, and also any dependencies. It's going to go away, grab, and create a dependency being an EMSQ, uh, a database table, or a file that needs to be copied onto the file system. So it's now processing the dependencies. And what I'll show you is the, um, the EMSQ dependencies that have actually been created on the system by this process. So we'll have a look at EMS admin, and I'll show you the queues on the system. There we are. Release Butler's still carrying on now and it's actually deploying our applications at the moment. So there was an AMX archive and a BW archive. And one of the unique selling points about this process is that the user doesn't need to understand the differences between your BW deployment process and AMX or indeed Business Connect. All that complexity is wrapped up in Release Butler itself. So we just come into the end of the deployment now and yes, build successful. Those applications have now been deployed. So let's now log into our TIBCO administration environments and have a look at those deployed applications. So I'm logging into Classic Administrator now. Let's locate the application. Oh, by the way, this is a HTML report that was generated by Release Butler earlier and it shows the status of those deployments. So we'll close that. Back to Classic Administrator, and we'll find that BusinessWorks archive that was configured in Systemnet and we just deployed using Release Butler. And what I want to show you is um, the configuration that's inside that BusinessWorks archive. Just navigate into the config, and there we've got a number of global variables which we're actually going to change the values of later in the demonstration. Okay, so if we now flip over to our AMX administrator and log in as administrator. We'll navigate to the service assembly and just have a quick look at the configuration there. It's, there's our service units. I'm now showing you the database dependencies that we created. So there's our table and indeed there's some data inside it as well. So let's now make some configuration changes in HP Systemnet and we'll deploy those changes into the TIBCO runtime environment. So we'll log in first of all, back on the landing page, and first of all we'll make a configuration change to a BusinessWorks archive. So we'll select BusinessWorks archives, pick our demo archive. We'll traverse the relationship path through implementation first of all, then through operation, and configuration properties are associated with operations, and there we have it. Now this is actually hello in Russian, which demonstrates support for extended character sets. Let's amend that and we'll make it hello in English. And save that change. We'll make one more configuration change, 
Um, we've got a number of JMSQs in the system. Let's select one of those and change a property of that queue. So there we've got another queue and it's got a prefetch value of 20. We'll change that value of 20 to be 5. So we'll edit the JMS queue and make that 25. And hit the save button. Now let's go back to release Butler and we'll deploy those changes. And rather than running through the full deployment process again, we can actually be more selective in the tasks we choose to run. So we're going to get our EMS configuration information, get our deployment information, and we're going to export that information. And what this is actually doing now is it's extracting the information from HP Systemnet into flat files. And this actually gives us a decoupled architecture. Um, in order for us to be able to deploy applications and deploy dependencies, HP Systemnet itself, in this instance running under JBoss, doesn't actually need to be running. The information's now in flat files once this export's complete and we can deploy and Systemnet can be offline. So the export part of this procedure is now complete. What I want to do is process those dependencies. If you remember the dependency change we made was the EMS queue. We changed the prefetch value from 20 to 5. So we'll process that dependency and this is going to go away. And it's actually going to make the changes in a, a smart way. It's not going to delete the queues and recreate them, which could actually result in losing any messages that were on those queues. It's just going to update the queue and it's going to update that property, the prefetch property from 20 to 5. And now we'll take the BusinessWorks archive that we changed and we'll, we'll deploy that. So again, it's a selective task running through the whole thing and perform that deployment. So this is actually behind the scenes now. It's doing a um, deployment against TIBCO Classic Administrator. The change we made was to one global variable. So once this completes, we'll log back into the TIBCO environment and we'll have a look at those changes. Okay, that's complete. First of all, we'll go to EMS, show queues. I don't know if you can see it there, but yes, indeed, the prefetch value has now been updated to 5. Back to TIBCO Classic Administrator, and we'll have a look at the BusinessWorks archive, inspect the configuration, and check that the global variable was updated. And yes, you can see clearly the value is now hello. Now the final feature I'm going to demonstrate is the ability to clear down your environment. So from Release Butler, it's a simple command, RB clear. What this does, it logs into your TIBCO runtime environments, both AMX and Classic Administrator. It'll stop any running applications and it'll undeploy them. It will also clear down any dependencies, so EMS and any database tables that you have. Now this is important, for example, in continuous integration where you might need to clear down your environment nightly and recreate from scratch. So it's almost complete, it's just undeploying our application. And there we have it, that's complete. We'll have a look at EMS. Yep, and we can see the queues have now gone. We'll log into Classic Administrator. That's just the administrator running. Any applications? No, they've been removed. We'll go back to AMX Administrator. Again, the service assembly has indeed been cleared. Database tables, no tables remaining. Finally, we'll have a look at the log files. Release Butler actually performs some post-process and analysis of the logs, and if it finds any errors, it reports them in the console. Every task that you run is timestamped, so you might run a deployment a number of times, and there'll be a file for each. Let's open up one of these logs. We'll have a look at the clean log that we just ran. Scroll down to the end. That brings to a close today's demonstration.